All right, uh, welcome back everyone. Uh, this is Doc with Blades and Blasters. Uh, we are going to be running, I believe this is session six of Mordheim, City of the Dam, using the Warhammer Fantasy uh, fourth edition rule set. Um, like I said, I am Doc, I will be your GM tonight. And I am joined with our players, uh, Matihi, Maddie as uh, Juliana. And then we have uh, TD, or the dude. He is going to play playing Lucian. And then we also have Ghost, who is playing Dorok, the Slayer. Um, like I said, this is going to be run for Blades and Blasters. If you haven't joined us, uh, please consider doing so. Uh, you can click the, the Join or the Like button uh, right down here on the, on the screen. Uh, please do so if you if you enjoy this episode. Uh, there are others behind it, and there will be others uh, ahead of it. Uh, so keep an eye out for those. Uh, also, uh, subscribe to our fan page if you if you like what we do. If you like uh, our role playing, our storytelling. Um, if you if you like the way you know we we uh, do this, uh, then definitely uh, think about subscribing to us uh, for more content. We run lots of different games, lots of different settings. Uh, lots of different systems uh, you, you'll probably uh, be able to uh, surely find something you enjoy so um, warhammer uh, mordheim city of the damned last we left off uh, juliana lucian and durak they were investigating the downed ship uh, riverboat the mistress and in doing so, uh, they went into a cave. They followed the trails and tracks uh, of what looked like might be survivors or, or someone into a cave system where they were uh, assaulted, set upon by a river troll. After a battle there and Lucian being uh, injured, Almost within an inch of his life, they were finally able to overcome the troll, uh, with Durok giving it one final blow. But in that battle, um, as everyone was uh, searching around the cave, Alwyn, the second mate of their boat, uh, was, was taken down, pulled under the water, and uh, killed by the troll. They returned to their boat, minus Alwyn, and with the addition of a small chest that Lucian had found on the shores just before leaving, they had to inform uh, Captain Frisch that his second mate was dead, that he would not be, be there, and he and Lucian let him know uh, in no uncertain terms of Alwyn's bravery uh, in combat. And that is pretty much where we left it, I believe. Um, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and pick back up uh, one second. Let me do something here. We're going to pick back up on our ship. that I left an image on that doesn't need to be there, so I need to get rid of it. So I will do that now. Oh, I guess I should mention also that uh, in that chest that was picked up, from the mistress, from the cold dead hands of someone lying on the shore 
as Lucian and Juliana went back to their their room, they opened it up, and inside was the mysterious green glow coming off of a large stone sitting inside the box. And that's where we left it. So we're going to pick up again on the boat as it's making its way down the water after having just cast off Lucian injured all when deceased. Switch some music out. wasn't the one either. Well, it's going to have to be for now because I unfortunately can't find the one I have. It's buried in a avalanche of tracks here somewhere. I hate when that happens. Mm -hmm. So, after returning to the ship, Lucian, Juliana, you had made your way uh, to your to your room, where you discovered the green stone in the box, giving off an eerie green glow. Durok, you were topside when you noticed the the glare, the glow, as Akko took a drag in of something, uh, some type of uh, probably tobacco type leaf, and his face lit up in the dark, and he looked almost have a grin on his face as he looked at you in the dark. He made his way back down to the common room where the others were. You guys slept fitfully through the night, thinking about what had just happened. The sounds the troll made as he came splashing out of the water the muffled yell that you now know had to have been all in as he was drug under his remains that floated up afterwards. Lucian, images of the troll swinging at you over and over and over until he hit you, damaged you. All these things passing through your eyes, through your minds, as you toss and turn. The following day comes. The following day comes, and the morning arrives. And the captain approaches you as you all wake up. Well, I hope you all were able to get some sleep. Well, uh, I think we're all just happy that we... And she kind of pauses for a second and looks over to Lucian thinking about uh, kind of the way Oops. he stepped in yesterday. Um, 
She just looks to Avos and smiles and nods. Uh, yes, it, um, we didn't get very much uh, sleep, but uh, the sleep that we got, um, well, at least uh, I think it what is enough for today. Isn't that right, Lucian? Most definitely. I think that any sleep is better than none at all. Yes, well, I myself tried to sleep. I just... And he turns and looks out at the water. I just can't stop thinking about my friend. Lucian will approach him and just put his hand on the captain's shoulder. It's completely understandable. I mean, so much has transpired already in just these couple of days. There's a lot to reflect upon and a lot to remember, but I think the only way to fully uh, commemorate the man himself is by living on and continuing to do what we all must do. And he doesn't look at you. He, he continues looking out over the water. But he nods gruffly in, in, in agreement. Yes, well, it's not as though we have much of a choice here. Out in the water. No choice but to continue on. And he turns back and looks at, looks at you all. We're a few days out for Midport. It's a decent enough size village. We're going to stop there once we get there. Resupply some. I need to take on some more crew. I need to give word of all one's fate. Send it back to Altdorf. His people need to know. So just be prepared for that. Midport, few days time, we'll be getting off, probably spending the night there, and then back on the boat. Yuliana nods. It is uh, perfectly understandable. It uh, might be also a good idea to take on more crew if, uh, well, from what we saw uh, with the wreck ship, if there are pirates out in these waters, then it is good to be prepared. Yes, well, the goal was always to stop at Midport and take oh. on more crew. I just have to take on a little more now, now that Alwyn's gone. I was going to take one, maybe two more. Now I'll definitely be taking three more on at least. And Juliana nods, um, well, uh, Captain, if you need anything from us, uh, please let us know. I appreciate that, Juliana. I think I'll be okay. Alwyn was a good man and he was my friend. But I've been on these waters long enough. He's been on these waters long enough. We all knew what could happen. I've lost friends before, and I'm sure I'll lose friends again. He'll be missed, but this ship has to keep running, and I'm the man to do it. Aye, that's the way of it. <laughs> Durag speaks up. It's just kind of fidgeting about. What I would like from you, and he looks over at you, Yuliana, is if maybe, and he seems a little, uh, a little hesitant for a moment, 
Well, it's Saskia. I don't think she's going to do too well. I would love it if maybe you could, I don't know, uh, talk to her. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not good with that kind of thing, you know, and he, he looks down at the ground. I mean, I just, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't right know what to say, but I think maybe someone should say something to her. Yuliana mm, nods. Don't worry, I will make sure to speak with her. Um, I could see, uh, well, she really already knew by the time that we are coming towards the ship. Um, where is she right now? Well, I imagine she's still down in the common room. She hasn't come up, up topside yet. Um... Well, you would know Durak. Uh, did, did you see her down there? Um, to be honest, I was a bit tired, actually. Didn't sleep very well. Wasn't paying much attention like I should have been, I suppose. Yeah, well, that's fine. I, uh, I'm, I'm sure she's there, most likely. Oh, she does need to make her way up here eventually. We we do still have work to do. The running of this ship is something that still needs to happen. I, I don't want to sound cruel. I don't want to push her. But I do need her help. I can try to take her place for a little bit till she comes up, if you don't mind me screwing up a bit, to be honest. And uh, he starts pointing to uh, the rigging wrapped around the sails and and uh, uh, the knots that are there and some of the some of the levers uh, to to pull them off and and swap them around. Do you know how to operate that? Ancestors, no, but I can give it a go if you're feeling lucky. If you don't know how to use it, I don't want you touching it. It's very easy to mess up. You're likely to put us in the rocks if you don't know what you're doing. Well, and I suppose it's best to let uh, the womanling take care of trying to get your crew woman up here. Yes, well, you know, uh, I do have an idea, though. Being a, being a dwarf, uh, I'd imagine you've you've had some some experience with maybe iron or black powder? Uh, I was a fisher's dwarf where I'm from, but a dwarf isn't worth his stone if he doesn't know somewhere on the forge. I have some clue. Well, if maybe you could check these small cannons, get the, make sure they're up to par, up to snuff in case we need to load them with shot. At the very least, you know, there's nothing Nothing blocking them. I'll take a gun, then include them if there's any trouble. You still want so I should mop the deck as well. I don't think mopping the deck's really going to make a difference for anyone right now. I think maybe if you uh, take a look at those cannons, making sure that we have our shot ready, that that will be uh, sufficient enough for Master Dwarf. All right, I'll take a gander. And he nods to you. Um, and then he, he looks over at you, Yuliana, and... Well, again, I want to thank you, you you all. Um, I'm, I'm glad someone was there. The with all when, when... Well, when that happened. Um... I'd hate to think of my my man out there facing that alone, leaving this earth by himself without a friend at his side. Yuliana mm, nods. I uh, understand. Um, as Lucian said, he 
was a good man and he fought uh, very well and it was an honor to fight by his side um, but for now and she'll look to Lucian and look from him to the captain uh, I am going to go downstairs and uh, see if I can um, find Saskia and she'll uh, kind of turn and leave to go back down and deeper into the ship and as Juliana turns away Lucian will grab her by the wrist real quick and just pull her back and he just whispers into her ear I know how you talk to people just try to be a little more understanding and empathetic Juliana looks up to Lucian and smiles uh, I will try um, if not, maybe uh, after you talk to the captain, as it seems like he's still feeling the uh, effects of the loss of his friend. Um, maybe if you hear too much crying downstairs, you should probably come down. Or send Dorak, because she's, uh, well, last time I checked, she's very interested in the dwarf. <sighs> well, let's, let's hope it doesn't come to that. I well, uh... She looks to be about to say something and gives him a little smirk. Sometimes uh, that kind of affection can well, work very well if you're upset. Sometimes, yes. But I don't think that this is the proper time for that type of affection. Mm, well, mm, I'll try not to bring it up. And she... Uh, and smiles at Lucian and again heads down uh, towards the uh, lower decks of the ship. Okay, so as you finish your conversation and you start heading down the rickety steps creaking all the way, uh, Lucian, you look over and you see uh, the captain start making making his way to his cabin. Um uh, he starts uh, walking towards the cabin as Juliana heads downstairs. Lucian will run to kind of catch him up, and he just calls out to the captain. Captain! And he startles for a second and briefly and, and turns around, Oh, uh, uh, yes, yes, Lucian. Uh, how can I help you? Do be sure to let me know if there's anything that you need or anything that we can do to help um, outside of just manning the ship. Yes, well, unfortunately, that's exactly what I need right now. I need to go into my cabin, pour over some charts uh, with... Oh my goodness. Sorry, guys. Let me look for something here. Sorry. With Saskia not up here, I need someone at least to just watch our heading, our direction. We're pretty set right now. We're in a wide part of the river, and there's nothing in these waters here. That should cause us any harm or damage. But it is always best to have someone topside here with eyes out, looking forward. Safety first, you know? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I can do it. I, I guess I can give it my best shot, if that's what you're asking. Well, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, even, even your worst shot would be, would be decent enough. Unless you fall asleep, open eyes is all I need. Absolutely. I'm your man. Thank you, Lucian. And I will find Arco and hopefully Juliana. Well, hopefully Juliana can get Saskia back up here. We can get this ship running proper. And once we get to Midport, take on more crew. Supplies. And we'll be in the final stretch towards it. And he 
kind of clinches his jaw just a little bit right before he says it. Right before we get to more time. And this thing just nods and I better get to it. As should you. Yes. Yes, I will. And he nods and starts walking back towards his cabin, towards the back of the ship or the boat. Uh, Dorok is still up top deck with you as well, uh, continuing to uh, check the cannons. Um, so you're you're up there with Dorok uh, at the very least. Right. And, and go ahead. I was just going to say Lucian will make his way over to Dorok. How goes it? He looks at Lucian. Hmm. Well, cannons are all right, serviceable. Don't look like they've been cleaned in forever. I've barely gotten started, though, to be fair. Right. The captain has asked that I just keep my eyes peeled and on. Um, Asking is that you also help keep a weather eye out. Help me at least to keep watch of any pirates or anything else on the river, anything on the banks that could be of any threat to us. I'm a slayer, manling. I'm always ready for danger. Which is exactly why I've approached you with this. Oh, uh, yeah. As you comment about the banks, you know, that you naturally uh, look over uh, the ship's railing across the water over to the shore, to the banks, and it's just dense wood with some rocky outcrops. As the, as the uh, clouds roll by, the, the, as far as you can see, it's just dense wood with a few rocky outcrops here and there. And you are indeed in a wide portion of the river. Uh, you're uh, nowhere near the banks. You just see them from the distance. Lucian will just make his way up to the highest point on the top deck. Just keeps look out. Okay. So as Lucin continues to scan the horizon and scan the uh, shorelines, Dorok cleaning out the cannons, cleaning them of any debris, shoving rags in there, pulling them out with any, with any gunk that might be attached, making sure the grape shot is all in place and ready boxes of it uh, just sitting next to uh, each cannon. The scene transitions as Juliana makes her way down to the common room. And Juliana, you make your way down to the common room and immediately as soon as you get down there, you see Saskia and she is sitting on the edge of a bed and she stands up quickly as you walk in and looks at you. Oh, he, yes, yes, Juliana. Um, yes, can I, can I help you? Mm, Juliana comes over to Saskia and she sits down on the bed where uh, Saskia was sitting, patting beside her. It's okay. Um, no one else is coming down, but I wanted to talk to you. Um, yes, yes, of course. Um, what, what is it you would like to talk to, you, or talk about? Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little off today. Uh, I just, I, I, I didn't sleep well last night. I don't think. Uh... Any of us did come sit, okay? Yes. Um, 
Um, and she looks at you and she just sits back down on the on the edge of the bed that she was sitting on when you walked in. And Yuliana turns herself to face Saskia. Um, looks at her kind of in the eyes and I um, understand yesterday was very hard and it's going to continue to be that way. I know it hurts, but Alwyn, um, he really did try his best. And I'm sorry that we couldn't bring him back to you. And her jaw clenches and she's wringing her hands just a little bit. And she sits there, she leans forward and takes a deep breath. He should be here right now. He should be here with the rest of us. He should be on this boat with us right now. Eliana nods. I know he should. But unfortunately, sometimes things just don't work out that way. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him, Saskia. He fought immensely yesterday. He was the reason that the troll even was brought down. If it wasn't for his sacrifice, I don't think any of us would have made it out alive. And go ahead and give me a perception test, Yuliana. Perception. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna use a uh, um, fate recharges after uh, each game, yeah. Um, it recharges a little, not completely, not fully. Okay, I'll uh, I'm gonna use a fate on that. <laughs> okay. No. Um, did you add in your plus 20? Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay. <laughs> okay, so you you see um, Saskia, again, grimace slightly. Um, but other than that, other than the obvious pain she's feeling on her, she's showing on her face, you're not getting a very good reading of her. And she looks over at you. Why did you go? Me? Well, I... I wasn't going to leave Lucien and Dorak behind or let them go off alone. But... Durak is, well, he's, he's a slayer, and Lucien looks like he could handle himself. Alwyn has been in many a battle. I don't, I don't understand why you chose to go, just, just to be at Lucien's side? Mm, Yuliana shakes her head. No, it's... It's not just that, Saskia. The three of us have traveled for quite a while. It was, um, I think it was originally Dorak who got us out of a bit of a uh, situation um, many months ago. Then the three of us decided to travel together. We've been doing everything uh, side by side for well, the past while. Um, I have my own set of skills that I am good at. Uh, back where I am from, I was trained in uh, combat with my family. Um, my father uh, trained me. 
so I'm no stranger to um, the bow of the sword. It's not just that I am a woman traveling with the two of them, I am also um, a comrade of both of them. And I'm not just going to let them go off, no matter how competent all three of them are. Go ahead, give me another perception test, Juliana. Yes. So, despite everything you just said, you notice easily that when you said one of the reasons is because uh, you've been traveling together for quite a while, uh, that was one of the reasons why you joined them. You see her somewhat recoil at that and clench her jaw almost as of angry. Her brow is furrowed and her jaw, she's just clenching it and clenching it and her hands are balled up in fists. When you finish talking, she turns slightly away from you and doesn't say anything. Juliana sighs. I... Look, Saskia, I know you're upset. You're probably thinking, why did one of us come back instead of Alwyn? And it's things that I want of myself as well why things have laid out the way they are. The thing is, sometimes that's just how things happen, unfortunately, and I know it sounds well, very plain, and I, I can see you're upset, but sometimes you just have to be strong and move on for those who have fallen. It's easy to blame the people who are still alive. It's easy to blame me, Lucien and Dorak, for still being here. And you can. That is perfectly in your right to be upset at us. But no matter what you do, whether you want to start some sort of altercation with us, it's not going to bring him back, unfortunately. And I'm sorry. And she stands up and quickly turns around to face you. <sighs> Start something with 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 you? No, no. <sighs> you you said you went because basically they are your friends. That you have a relationship with them. You have traveled with them for some time. Your words. I have traveled with Alwyn for five years. Five years we have been on this boat or another together, a team. I should have been at his side too. Saskia, she'll get up. Look, I. There's no reason to blame yourself in any of this. I'm sure the captain thinks the exact same thing. Your other comrades as well. That if they only went, they could have saved him. But you could have died too. As could you. And you went anyway. But I didn't. I stayed here where it was safe. On the boat. While my friend died in that cave. Saskia. The captain also needed you here. He couldn't send both of you. You're both very valuable to the crew. You understand that. And you can't change what happened by blaming yourself. And she looks at you and obviously, tears are in her eyes. 
and tears just start rolling down her face. You went to be by the side of your friends that you've known for, what did you say, months? Dark, yes, but Lucian more. I stayed on this ship while my friend died, despite being by his side for years. And she puts her hands on either side of Saskia's shoulders and gives her a very hard look. Saskia, I am going to be very plain with you right now. I can be as comforting as I want, and you're going to keep going into these cycles of blaming yourself for what happened, not being there. But if you keep blaming yourself, you're not going to be performing at 100%. You're not going to be yourself, the self that Alwyn knew, and the self that came to be friends and comrades with you. And you're not going to be able to do the rest of the crew the justice that they deserve. So you need to stop blaming yourself. You need to make sure to tighten your pants, get up there, and do your job. And keep on going for Alwyn. And not keep blaming yourself for what happened. Because that's not what he would want, is it? Go ahead and make a fellowship roll. Oh, no! <laughs> the heck? Uh, I'm going to spend it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to spend it. <laughs> I'm going to try to roll that. <laughs> oh! <laughs> well, oh, even well. better! So, as your voice becomes more sober and you lay your hands on her and basically tell her to get her shit together and get back to work, she looks at you and her lip is quivering and her brow is, her, her brow is furrowing. And she says through the tears, Yes, well, I guess I will get back up and do my job. I know he meant nothing to you. I know he was nothing to you. Although he died trying to help save your life, it matters not. My pain means nothing to you. My tears mean nothing to you. You're only concerned that I get you where you want to go. I understand now, Juliana. I understand as she forcefully pulls her shoulders away from your hands. Don't worry. We'll get you to where you need to go and then we'll let you go. I'll mourn for my friend of many years once you're gone and you don't have to witness it anymore. I apologize that you had to see me this way. And she storms out of the common area and back up topside. Yuliana does kind of watch her go and there's a slight twinge of feeling bad, but she also knows that, uh, well, what she said was true. Um, and Vice, uh, at least in her opinion, is going to help her at least move on from here, maybe channeling the anger towards her instead of towards herself. So Yuliana kind of sees this as a success and makes her way back up top deck to see Lucian. Okay, so you make your way back up there. 
And as you do, you see Durok tinkering around with uh, some cannons and some grape shot. And you see Lucian standing up on a, on a platform, just lazily looking out over the water. She looks to up to uh, Lucien. She looks over to Durak and makes her way over to him. How's the cleaning going? Oh, well, most of the cannons are all right for manling work. There's gunk in most of them. Uh, they had chain shot tied to go to grape shot like morons. That would have went over really well. Probably shoot the damn cannon back into the ship. But, all things considered, it's not terrible for a manling vessel. If it was dwarfish, though, the whole crew would be executed. <laughs> well, uh, they have you, so thanks for being here. Ha! <laughs> You're probably right. You manling should be able to kill plenty of trolls on your own by now, but... I suppose. Uh, I suppose I did do a deed. Eliana nods and she kind of glances over at Saskia and looks back to Durak. Uh, I think maybe Lucian should have talked to the girl. I am. Uh, apparently, there's a plane approach. The She's uh, not the best. She's very mad at me. What you say, womanling? Oh, well, uh, I basically told her that, uh, well, Alwyn wouldn't want her blaming herself for, you know, not going with, uh, go not going with us and participating in the battle and it's all her fault and all that crap. So I told her to, well, pick up her pants and get back to work almost. Uh, <laughs> she did not take that very kindly. Mm. I tends to be most womanlings in your race don't. Well, that's about what I would have said, to be honest. Other than the fact that life's too short for her to be mucking about, especially for her. Really, all women lived about as long as the life as most manlings are capable of. She nods. Yes, and well, the way that Lucian made the approach on the captain. Personally, I would have told him exactly what happened in the caves, but uh, apparently, according to Lucian, it is better to give them some sort of solace, whether it's true or not, that Alwyn uh, kind of died before the battle started. He, he wraps a couple of um, cloths around and is going to go into one of the cannons with it. Well, Manling's got... A decent bit of sense in a fight, apparently. But he's got a silver tongue. If you want him to talk to Saskia, I suppose you could. But... I don't know. After what conversation you're telling me she had with you, you're probably not going to do much good. Well, it's worth a try. I'll see if he wants to. He's probably not going to be very happy with what I said. And she's going to look up to Lucien and give the rock a nod. Well, uh, enjoy cleaning up the cannons. Enjoy having someone plotting your demise the whole time you're on ship. Oh, well, she's not going to try it, I know that. She'll give him a smile before making a rep to the platform where Lucien is. So you turn after finishing a conversation with Rock and... A breeze hits you across the face and blows your hair slightly as you start walking towards the platform where Lucian is standing and scanning the skyline and the shoreline. And Juliana pushes the hair out of her face with a hand and comes up to Lucian, putting a hand on his shoulder and giving a kiss on the cheek. How's, uh, watching the, uh, the waters. You seem to be very active. Lucian senses the sarcasm and he just 
looks at her out of the corner of his eyes and then fixes his eyes back out toward the shore. He arcs his eyebrow and picks his chin up high and he just snorts. (laughs) Well, how did things go? You look very (laughs) self-important. Uh, as for what I was doing, um, I do not think I got through to her. Uh, well, she's at least out and about now, but she's, uh, (laughs) very mad at me. And as she says she's at least out and about now, Lucian, you glance down uh, at the main deck, and you can see Saskia, and she's busy, uh, tying knots and rigging and, and messing with the sails and, and just going about her her normal job. Lucian, as you said, sees her. He squints hard and focuses his gaze on her and then turns toward Juliana and just looks at her and then pinches his brow and his uh, the bridge of his nose. <sighs> Well, what did you say? Well, I tried the nice approach, which was comforting and saying that he did so much and he's the reason we survived and all that stuff that you said to the captain. She got in this uh, bit of a spiral and started blaming herself for not following and she's been with Alwyn for five years and she stayed on the ship where it's safe and just starts to cry and got very upset so I tried Uh, and the keyword is tried um, to basically give her the encouraging words of this is not what Alwyn would want and that you know she needs to keep going forward with her life and you know keep trying and if she gets into these uh, habits of spiraling and blaming herself then hell it's Really not going to do herself or anything good because, you know, it's not going to bring back Alwyn. And then she kind of turned it on me and said I didn't care about what happened to him. Lucian, with his thumb and his pointer finger, just began to rub his eyes. And he sighs. And what exactly was your tone? Well, I think that I came off very sweet, um, but very firm, as uh, usually when I'm giving advice, that's how I give it. Um, I mean, it's plain, but it's true. Uh, she took it in a completely different emotional direction. Lucian just slides both of his hands uh, toward the back side of her head and neck and just gives a small chuckle. And his lip curls up with a half grin. <laughs> you were always so delicate with words. And then he pulls her in. And kisses her on the forehead and then just pulls her head to his chest and holds her for a moment. And that's part of why I could I could never I could never get away from here. Sorry. Sorry. Mm. And he, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say then he just releases her and just stares at her for a long moment. This uh, Juliana takes the time as he pulls her in. She is a bit surprised, but she wraps her arms around his waist. And as he lets her go, she kind of maintains the grasp around him, looks up at him, leaning her chin on his chest. Well, uh, I'm happy that you're. I'm not trying to get away from me, at least right now. I'm... Mm. She looks off to the side. 
I know it sounds uh, bad, but um, <laughs> but um, I'm glad it was Halloween. Uh, it sounds horrible. I'm sorry. Um, I just don't want anything to happen to you. Is what I mean. Yuliana, go ahead and make a perception test. And so, as you say that, Lucien is holding you. You turn your head against his chest. And as you do, you catch eyes with Saskia down on the deck, who is looking up at you. Almost with a look of anger, and she just immediately turns and goes back to work. Yuliana kind of tilts her head back up to look at Lucien. Uh, yes, yeah, she's still very angry with me. Um, I'm not sure if she's going to be uh, plotting anything now, as uh, Dark said. But uh, I'll, I maybe want to keep eyes out for her. Lucien a bit taken aback. He looks over and really stares hard over at Saskia. And he curls his lip a bit in not necessarily anger, but he's just not disgusted either, but he's just got this feeling of um, confusion. And in those moments, he he's not exactly sure of what to do with his face. So he just looks, comes off as stern looking as if he's puzzled and thinking hard. Perhaps best just leave her alone for a while. Uh, I don't think it's going to do her any good having any of us approach her. No. But I don't think she's going to do anything either. I just, I... I hope not. I mean, I don't think there's much she can. Uh, you see, Juliana catches herself. I don't know I'm so confrontational right now. Well, I've always thought you were a very patriarchal woman, and you've always been that top bitch. <laughs> and she laughs and Let's go, Lucy, and just nod. And I uh, guess I still have that top bitch behavior. And as you're holding each other, laughing, obviously in high spirits, Durak, uh, go ahead and make a perception test. Wow. Didn't even get my plus 20. That's fine. Um, you notice uh, Akko come topside. And he's standing over by... Uh, oh, he sta I'm sorry. He's standing over by Saskia. And you notice because obviously it's Akko, uh, dirty elf. Uh, you you see him over there, but you see Saskia turn to him and sign something, and Akko signs back, and she gives a wry, sad smile and nods just a little bit at whatever Akko is signing, and they hug each other. But then you see Saskia sign something else. And with the sun just barely in your eyes, you can see Akko turn and look at Lucian and Yuliana. And in the distance, you hear them up on the platform breaking out in laughter. Oh, what a couple of wazics. 
Um, he will put the uh, loader um, that he was cleaning the cannons with into a barrel nearby where it's supposed to go, probably. And then we'll walk over to where they're kind of about laughing and giggling. And Oi! You Wazix are done celebrating for no reason. Maybe you could do some actual work around here, huh? Oh, Yuliana turns to look at Durak. Oh, sorry, um... You're just, uh... Talking. I ain't giggling it up. Always a fun time, eh? Come on now, you've got plenty of inns and whorehouses to laugh it up at. And Yuliana just shakes her head. Ugh, fine, fine. I'll find something to do. And she Wozzick. looks... <laughs> she'll look to Lucia and just uh, give him a bit of a smirk. You enjoy stalling out at the sea. I shall. It's quite a fitting manner for me. And, uh, uh, Yuliana kind of moves away from the platform and, um, she's gonna attempt to find something to keep her occupied. I can help with that. <coughs> no. <laughs> wow. Excuse me. Um so yeah, you you look around and and basically uh looking for something to do. Durak uh shows you what he was doing, you know, the previous days, a couple of days uh kind of swabbing the deck, keeping it clear and uh points out to where all the all the stuff is to do that as he goes back to finishing uh, the work he was doing and Lucin continues just keeping an eye out and scanning the horizon scanning the shorelines you all see uh Saskia and Akko uh keeping to themselves uh keeping busy and there's a definite feeling of tension uh an us and them feeling as uh, Akko and Saskia uh, do very little uh, to come into contact with the three of you or to speak to you. Yes, yes. Uh... All right. Um, so does Yuliana actually mop the deck of the ship? Would be my no. question. She'll move things. She ain't mopping. That's that's completely up to Yuliana. I, Shame I, for. I can't yeah. tell her what to do. This no, is... just, I, that was that was my open question to Matt. Yeah, yeah, she's uh, not. Yeah, you 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 can point the stuff out and tell her how she can help. That's up to her whether or not she does. <laughs> yeah. She'll like move things, but she's not. Uh, she's not mopping. <laughs> You see, womanling, there's a hierarchy, and now you've entered the bottom. I am the cannon cleaner now. You're the box mover, I suppose. Oh, my, uh, my apologies. I didn't know when you volunteered yourself to help out on the ships that I was also volunteered as well, Dark. Well, you're getting passage, aren't you? Least you can do is move their boxes. Why are you getting passage? Those paid for. Because we're on a mission for someone. You have offered to help, and you offered at the very beginning to assist these people in their daily duties, and that was your choice, as it was a choice for them. I will assist with small things, things that I know I can do, but I am not polishing a deck. I don't think you polish and get back to fixing the cannons. Yuliana just rolls her eyes and... She's going to do minimal uh, effort to help. Okay. Um, is there anything anyone else wants to say to each other, to to Akko, to Saskia, maybe the captain? Um, it's kind of just open to whatever it is uh, Lucy and Yuliana or Durok would like to do right now. Um, 
I mean, I'd interact with them if approached in any way. Probably nothing favorable with Akko. Um, but most, for the most part, um, he's just going to let them work through their grieving, however they handle it. Unless otherwise approached, he's just going to do his work. Lucian will actually give a sharp whistle to Yuliana and signal for her to come up. And Yuliana will turn her head and she'll make her way over to the platform and come up to Lucian. Yes, what can I help you with? Um, if you wouldn't mind, stand here and keep a lookout. I'm gonna go and talk to the captain, explain the events that transpired. Ah, uh, all right, um... I'll stand here. I can, I can do that. And she takes uh, Lucian's place and stands, puts her hand out and see if there's any if there's any bars or anything. Yeah, there's some sort of railing. She'll hold on to it. And... Yep. So you you stand there and you look over the horizon. And it's the same thing. Uh, it's out. You're in the middle of a very wide portion of the river. With, with no no narrowing in sight, uh, the the distant shoreline uh, just shows dense forest, uh, dense wooded areas with some rocky outcrops. There doesn't seem to be any inlets or beaches or anything else. Uh, it's just all uh, flush comes comes straight out into the water. But um, you stand there with the the wind kind of just hitting you in the face and and uh, blowing your hair back as you stand up there where the wind is just a little stronger as Lucian heads down. And Lucian will walk down the stairs and make his way over to the captain's cabin and just give a soft knock on the door. Beg pardon, captain. You give a knock on the door and... He says, oh, yes, uh, uh, come in, come in, Lucian. Lucian enters the cabin, sees the captain sitting at his desk and poring over paperwork. And he just approaches and stands rather rigid. Um, of coming to you with, I'm not sure, but it may be a bit of a problem moving forward. No. A problem? What What kind of problem? Well, you see, Captain, Ileana went and talked to Saskia. Apparently, things did not go so well. Well, I, I don't, I don't understand. What do you mean things didn't go so well? Um, it's just, it's just talking. I, I, I don't, I don't understand. Well, you, you have to understand that Juliana has a bit of a communication issue. She comes off a bit stern, and doesn't always fully relay her empathies and Saskia did not receive very well and things got a bit heated from what I understand. And he raises his eyebrows. Heated? Uh, I just I just wanted her to be a shoulder. I just uh... I just wanted her to say, I'm sorry, if, if you need anything, I'm here. That That's it. That's that's all she needed to do. What do you mean? He did. I, I can't for certain say, Captain. I wasn't in the room, but it sounds like, as I said, Juliana wasn't entirely all that well received. And Saskia lashed out a bit, and which is completely understandable. You understand? 
It's just one of those things. It's Juliana. She's just not as delicate with the words. Oh, for God's sake. There needed not be any delicacy. Just, I'm sorry, I'm here if you need me. That That's all she needed to do. Ugh. I, I, I don't know how this could turn into something else. I don't know how it could turn into a conflict. Ugh. Very well. Um... Noted. Is there a reason you needed to inform me of this right now? Is it just to let me know Saskia's angry? No, that's not entirely all I came down here for. I just wanted to also check on you and see if there's anything else you may require. But also to raise to your attention that there may be a feud Yes, well, there will be no feud on this boat. There will be no infighting. There can be disagreements. I don't care about that. But there will be no fighting or conflict. Do you understand, Lucian? Perfectly, Captain. And please tell your woman that there will be no conflicts as well. Absolutely. And don't worry. And he softens his face just a little bit. I'll talk to Saskia. I'll make sure there is nothing there. No ill will. This is difficult for her. As it is me. That's why I, I'm angry now. I understand completely, Captain. I merely thought that I should raise to your attention the ongoings. And also I thought it important that I apologize. Yes, well, your apology is accepted, Lucian. Not that it was needed, but thank you. And he stands up and pushes the chair away, turns around and walks around his desk and he puts his, his hand out to you. Lucian looks down, sees the hand extended, and reaches a hand out as well. And he looks you in the eye as he shakes your hand. I brought you on board this boat on the word of someone I trust. I'm going to continue to trust that person because they've never given me any reason not to. I please, please, I hope you and your friends don't become the reason I don't trust my friend anymore. And he lets go of your hand. Lucian just stares back into the eyes of Captain Frisch and his face goes a bit hard and he just nods. Very well. I'll be out shortly. And he goes back around the desk and uh, sits down and starts going over the charts. And he says, oh, Lucian, before you leave. Lucian turns, yes. When we get to Midport Village, there isn't much in the way of supplies except for the very basic necessities, which is really all we need. But if there is anything you need there, make sure you'll get it in that first day because we are leaving the very next. And Lucian just fixes a gaze on the captain and then nods, understood. Very well, Lucian. You may head back out. I'll be out shortly. 
Lucian just turns and strolls out the door. You stroll out and you head back to the main deck of the ship. It rocks just the slightest, uh, the most gentle rock as the breeze pushes against it. The white sails billowing in the wind. Necessary to go upstream like this. And you see Yuliana, Dorak going about their business on one side. On the other side, you see Saskia and Akko going about their business. Everyone busy, not necessarily getting along, but doing what needs to be done. And the day continues like this. After a little while, the uh, captain makes his way back out. Some of you stop to eat. Some of you stop to nap. At different times, different combinations of people are topside. Some are below deck. You can see small conversations and whispers here and there. But the boat continues forward. Again, gently rocking on the water in the wide river until nighttime comes without incident. The sun goes down and everyone retires to their rooms again with Akko left topside with his elf vision being able to see in the dark keeping watch, looking over the horizon. If there's any conversations anyone would like to have in private in their rooms, they can, or with each other in their rooms, they can. Otherwise, it's going to be the following day. Um, I know uh, at one point when they're kind of heading back down, um, Juliana is going to pull Durak aside. Um, Doc says, uh, she kind of leans down and whispers, There's uh, some things that we need to show you. So it was in that, um, that chest. <sighs> All right, then. You are hidden away somewhere in your love shack. Uh, yes, you do. Come with me. <sighs> All right. And she leads him back into the room. I don't know if uh, Lucien's there at that point. Probably. See. Yeah, so she, uh, once she gets Durak into the room, she shuts the door behind him. Oh, I'd, um, not, sh I don't think so, but, uh, hell, maybe we shouldn't tell him, uh, just yet, or oh, at all. Uh, it's, we kind of fancy since she'll pull out the, um, the chest. We got it open, um, using that key, and, well, found something very interesting. Probably one of the things that that merchant wanted us to find. And she'll reach in and grab the green stone and pull it out for Durak to see. Durak know what this is? Uh, go ahead and make... Uh, what is it going to be? Intelligence? Uh, intelligence with uh, a plus 30, Duroc, uh, due to your dwarf heritage. So, Durok, you look at it as she eyes widen, and you immediately know exactly what that is. Um, 
so much so that you are just slightly reluctant to grab it as she's handing it towards you. Yeah, and he looks at it. Um, what stone? He kind of pulls his hand away and uh, what? I think this is what the merchant wanted us to look for. I mean, it's green. I'm sure there's also green stones, but this one is. It's just so beautiful. I would know what this does to people, right? Like, I don't know how. I don't know that dwarves are very much affected by it just because of. They're just usually anti magic. A lot of the mm -hmm. time, but I'd be aware of the effects this can have, right? Y yes, you would. Put that way and cover it. Now. Uh, are, you, are you mad? What? Do you know what this will do to you? No, I don't. I'm assuming you'll do by your tongue. Well, it depends, womanling. Would you like to have three arms, a second face, something of that nature? Uh, no. Chill. Um, take it and drop it back into the box. Keep it covered. He looks at the door to make sure it's locked and clo closed, at least. You fools. Oh, oh nine, nine, nine. He just kind of rubs his head. This is bad. Why? God, not being clear, Doc. If it's something, you know, important, then maybe you should use words. That's pure magic energy you've got there in that stone. What stone? Weird stone, if you call it that. It's extremely dangerous. Potent, powerful eye, but magic in itself is inherently dangerous. And you've got the most dangerous piece of equipment magic could possibly have. Oh, I think she'll make sure to close the, the chest and put it back under the bed. I don't want... Make sure to keep it covered. And I'll touch it with my hands again. You should toss it away if you're being perfectly sane. Aye, it's worth a load of money, but no gold coin is worth that. And if I keep it covered, isn't it going to be fine? It's not like a, a wound or something you can just put something over. It radiates magical energies. For me, not too big a deal. Dwarf's always been tough when it comes to magic. They always are strong that way, but you're kind. Mm -mm. That's where mutants come from. Oh, well, maybe we could sell it once we get to uh, landside. If that's the stone this manling wants, mm -mm. We're going to have bigger problems than just this one stone if he's trying to get us to bring all that back. Mm. She looks to Lucian. Lucian's just staring at the box at this point. And he picks his head up and looks to Durak. Do you know if there's any way to contain any of this power? I mean... Not to harness it, just to contain it, to shield ourselves. <sighs> he kind of sits down and thinks. Dowie, don't mess with it. I suppose if a dwarf could be convinced to go against all his core values in order to perhaps fix something up, someone with a bit more mechanical sense than myself, we could find a way to contain it. Uh, there are others rumored to be able to contain it. Contain being a very loose wording, if you believe in such beings. But as far as within your purview, other humans, manlings would know to do with this. Well, there are at least some that do, or at least some that wish to know what kind of powers it can unleash. Lucian begins to stroke his chin, thinking hard. 
What do you think that this merchant could want with it? I don't plan on guessing at the motives of manlings. You lot are always overly ambitious and too big for your britches. If I had to guess, he knows someone wants to buy it. Probably somebody in the in your wizard's tower or whatever it was where that crazy witch was from. It's not allowed to be there, my understanding of your archaic foolish laws, but that wouldn't stop someone from doing something to get it. Of course, I'm just, I'm just guessing at this point. No, your guess is maybe more educating than either of ours, seeing as how you have so much more background. Hmm. Yeah. Dirac will smile at that. I, I suppose I do. Well, if it is as expensive as you say, um, uh, how much approximately could I tell that weighed that one stone just by hand? Um, go ahead and make a, uh, what's it going to be? Uh, in, in, is, do we have intuition? Intuition? Yep. yep. Go ahead and make an intuition test. Ooh. So you, you pick it up and you, you're holding the box and you're kind of, uh, bouncing it up and down in your hand and, uh, you're looking up and to the left with your eyes and thinking about it and it's got some heft to it and your best guess is 10 pounds for that one rock wow. it's dense and it's heavy um, and it's definitely got some some decent weight to it yeah, she puts it back down and shoves it underneath the uh, the bed again. <sighs> and so that's one lock. He's probably worth uh, quite a bit of money. I mean, if that gentleman was just going to pay us even just 60 gold in total for something like this, well, imagine what we could get with uh, someone who actually wasn't going to undercut us. We didn't promise him to bring him back, we just said we'd try. You want my advice, you get rid of this as soon as possible. Not that I think anybody where we're going is going to be able to afford that much warp stone, but you get rid of it. <sighs> I'm gonna get some money out of it. I mean, I'd rather be like, whole and not a mutant by the time we get back. It's my preference because there's more money in it for us when we get uh, back with Frederick, so... You're not feeling any different now, are you? Either of you? I don't think so. I feel perfectly normal. Good. Don't open that up again. If you plan on hiding it from the crew, well... I'd keep, just keep it hidden. There is, uh, if they know what it is, or if they think they know what it is, well, I don't know manlings, but like I said, you're overly ambitious. I like these, these crew, they don't seem too bad, but money, you know, I've seen what dwarfs will do when they go gold mad. can't imagine what a manling will do if he sees 10 pounds of whoopstone. Hey, Leif, she's, one of them's already mad at me, I mean... Probably try to uh, gut us, so I think we'll just keep it under the bed until tomorrow. Yeah, about that. I don't think that putting it under the bed where it's in very close proximity to where we sleep is such a great idea. Oh, well, why do you propose that we hide it then, Mr. Lucian? Lucian does a quick scan of the room. Is there like a, an armoire or anything like that in here? There is, yep. Well, it's not entirely far away, but it's much, much farther away than directly under our under our heads as we sleep. And then Lucian will look down at the key. Durak, perhaps you should hold on to this, Master Slayer. Oh, and he kind of looks at it. 
I don't know if I want to be anything involved in this more than I already am. I don't even want your money from this, crazy as it sounds. By the way, I think perhaps the key would be safest in your hands. I suppose I could hold it for a fee, and he smiles. And what's this fee exactly, Doc? Well, some money. Which is... how much? How much is this key worth to you, womanling? Uh, it depends. Maybe I'll just hold on to it myself. And she looks at Lucian. This is your plan. I will... Just throw a number out, Durak. Nine, nine, nine. Any decent dwarf and merchant doesn't put figures on the table before his opponent. Go on now. What, what's this worth to you, Lucian? Would you hold it for two gold? Two? That's quite a bit of money. And this could be quite a fortune, or it could be quite devastating. Make it four, and you've got a deal. Lucy, wow. when he says that, I want you to make a cool test. Nomad? Uh, you can do your 20. plus 20. Yep. So when he says that, it stings a little bit coming from someone who is a friend, someone who you are working with, who is taking you for your hard-earned gold to hold a key as a favor. But you don't let it get to you. You stay calm and cool. You can respond however you'd like. Well, Dirk, four gold would be a price, but it's not a price I'm going to pay. I think I'll just hang on to that key. I suit yourself. I'm better for it, to be honest. I want nothing to do with that stone. That's okay. As much as I don't entirely respect the fact that you're driving up a price to hold a key, I do respect your decision not to want to any part of it. I got nothing to say to that manly other than you have no idea what you're into and for a gold is a bargain. But, fair enough. I'll tell you my lips are sealed. I won't out you to the crew as any sane man would. You have my oath as a dwarf. I won't tell anyone what you're stashing here. Though we might all be worse for it. Well, I think we appreciate that. Indeed, I do appreciate your candor. <sighs> well, is that the only piece of volatile, unstable, destructive piece of equipment you pulled before you left the shoreline? Yes, it is. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to go back to sleep and pretend like I didn't just see that. Hey, you have a good night then, Doc. Hi, hi, womanling. He goes and opens the door and actually checks outside the hallway looking about before he exits. And... You look out the door, and there's no one out there. It's quiet. It's dim. The boat gently rocks as you head back down to the to the common area. Juliana and Lucin, you are left alone in your room as Durak makes his way quietly through the ship quietly through the boat back down to down to the common area 
if there's anything left for you two to say while you're alone, you can now. Otherwise, we'll move on. Yuliana mm, puts the the chest kind of into the uh, armoire there, making sure to cover it with some of their things, locking it up, and uh, going back over to Lucian and passing him over the key. I guess you'll be keeping this then. Lucian will look at her and looks down at the key in his hand and he closes his hand on it tightly and then reaches out and grabs Juliana by the hand, pulls it out and places the key down into her hand. Well, if nothing else, Durak believes that I have the key. I don't believe that he'll turn his back on us or side against us but I think it may be best in your position if nothing else if later on down the line I were to perish at least you have something to uh, don't say that with. no at least you have something and I won't have left you with nothing Juliana takes a key, but she sits down uh, on the bed, looking to Lucian. I don't want you talking like that. I, Lucian, I don't really want to think about losing you anytime soon. I almost did in the caves. Shh, nonsense. That troll couldn't hit me if it tried. Well, it, 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 it did. Barely. Was a flesh wound. Yes, and she puts a hand on his face. I can see where the flesh was wounded right here. She kind of rubs her finger, her thumb, kind of over the scratch on his face. Lucian will scrunch his face a little bit as he winces. Well, I meant for that to happen, obviously. I thought it'd give my face a little more character. Yes, because it was so boring before. Every little bit adds something. <laughs> ah, you're right. I'm... I'm just... very relieved about... well... getting out of there in the first place, so... I don't want any of this talk about leaving me behind with things. If nothing else, though, that's all we have. That's all you have. So, if anything does happen to me, I want you to get rid of it as soon as possible. And make sure that you take care of yourself. Because no matter, no matter what happens, I'm always going to be in front of you. I know. But what we should think about, CC, is we're going to get quite a bit of money from this stone. We're going to get quite a bit of money from this job. And maybe once it's all over, we'll finally be able to just stop and live the life that we've been wanting to. One that I could only dream of having and providing for you. And she smiles. And looks between the scene's eyes. I know. We'll get there. I know we will. I hope. And as you... Go ahead, sorry. No, that was all I had. I hope. And as you let her know, let each other know your feelings. You hear the night grow quiet. Occasionally you hear the padding of footsteps as someone is walking on the top deck. And you go to sleep for the night. And as you go to sleep, you sleep fitfully. 
tossing and turning just slightly. As you toss and turn, you have vivid dreams, Juliana. Dreams that you can't quite remember, put your finger on. But during the dream, it's almost a feeling of darkness. Go ahead and make an endurance test for me, Ileana. Uh, I'm sorry, it's going to also be a challenging, so that means no bonus. A challenging endurance oh. test. So, the night goes on and you continue waking up tired, exhausted, but it's the next day. It's the next day and it continues on basically the same as the river narrows in some spots just slightly. You see a beach here or there, but no signs of anything. The day continues, everyone going about their business, doing their work, making their way slowly but surely up the river towards Mordheim. Juliana, Lucian, you give each other glances and hold hands. You talk when you can, but you attempt to do it out of sight, or at least not so obvious in front of Saskia anymore. Knowing that she is angry and hurt still by what happened only a day ago. The captain goes about his business. He spends time in his cabin, comes back out. He gives some orders. But otherwise, the day moves ahead again uneventful. When you wake up on the third day, and you wake up and the sun is bright, you can hear birds overhead. And Lucian, you see that's a good idea. Let's go ahead and take five for a bio break, everyone. Okay. Right when I was back. Haha. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yep. Let's go ahead and just take five. Taken. Can't believe you guys would pay me. <laughs> Suck it, dwarf. Suck it, dwarf. I'm gonna get a. I'm gonna get some water. Same. It's four gold for the four hundred you'll make. You got greedy, dwarf. You got greedy. You guys have no idea. You guys are fucked. You guys are so fucked. Ah! Warpstone is like a WMD in a box. You guys have a fucking weapon in your your chest. Your chestlet. You're both gonna die horribly. TBH fam.
I'm back. Okay, I am back as well. Everyone back? Yep. Is Ghost back? Of course. Okay. All right. Everyone is back, so we will uh, get started in three, two, one. So the previous night passed uneventfully, and you look out, and like I said, the river narrows and slightly in certain areas uh, some of the wood becomes less dense the the horizon changes just the the slightest bit but not too much it's still a wide portion of the river that you're making your way down the sun is bright and there are birds in the air everyone's going about their business and the three of you can go ahead and make a uh, perception test. So I would have uh, succeeded with plus 20 if it's plus 20. Yes, it is plus 20. Okay, I would have passed. Okay. Uh, Durok, uh, you you see the captain up on the platform, and he's using his spyglass. And he's been standing up there uh, for a while now, uh, longer than usual, looking out uh, on the horizon in front of you. So seeing that Durok will kind of mop his way over there and then see a spot of bullet cutting. And he pulls the spyglass down and he looks down at you. Oh, no bother, really. It's uh, just a little bit of a speed bump, not one I was expecting. And at that, when he says that, he puts his fingers in his mouth and he whistles and he signs something uh, that you don't quite understand. And he gets Akko's attention. And then after he signs to Akko, you immediately see him signing over to Saskia, who walks over. And all of you notice this now. And Saskia starts uh, unfurling the sails and lower the, lowering them. And Juliana kind of makes her way over towards Durak and the captain. Um, uh, what is going on? And the captain looks over, and he's holding the spyglass in his hand. He's looking, and he points far ahead down the wide river he said right there you see that and he's pointing to a dark spot um yes i i see that but what does it mean and he hands you the spy gas Juliana. look at it again She'll raise a spyglass to her eye and take a peek at the black spot. Um, Ileana, you look through it and you see off in the distance that black spot, what looks like a sail. And there's an image on the sail. Go ahead and make an intelligence test for me. An image that 
means nothing to you, but you do see that it is a sail. Mm. Yuliana takes a spyglass away from her eye, handing it back to the captain. And she shakes her head. I see that maybe there's a, a ship ahead, but I'm not too sure what it means. There's some sort of uh, flag or something. And Captain Frisch closes the spyglass, attaches it to his belt, and starts making his way towards the stairs to go down the platform. And as he does, he just says, Patrol boat. Most likely, pirate hunters. High off patrol boat. And he just kind of grunts as he makes his way down the stairs. You're going to be alright, Durak. Yeah, Durak is just gripping the mop handle and you hear the wood kind of creaked a bit and relaxes his grip, realizing he's about to break it. I hate knife ears. Mm, I hate them almost more than anything. Mm. You know, it's concerning considering you hate many things. Uh, let's just attempt to remain calm and try to get through this as uh, fast as possible so we can move on and you can talk about how much you hate some more after. I think I might see about taking a break early and going below deck while they're here. Alright. So you guys see the captain, Akko and Saskia, uh, busily uh, unfurling the, the sails, lowering everything, and then Akko go back and hit the lever that lets down an anchor off the side of the boat. And you just hear the clink, 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 clink as it makes its way down to the deep river. And Saskia walks by and looks at you. She just says, well, it looks like a high-off patrol boat. Nothing to fear, just don't make any sudden moves towards them, I guess. <laughs> they, uh, they're out here sometimes. It's somewhat rare, but not unheard of. They, they have their own merchants and cargo ships that they like to protect. These waterways, well, it's a major highway for, for them as well. So they sometimes send their own people out here. And well, it looks like we've run into one of them. If you don't mind, Soskia, I would uh, ask if I might take a break a bit early whenever they come by someone on upper deck when they're here. Well, sure, hey, that's fine. We, we will let them know that you are here, though. Uh, it's no use lying to them. They they always seem to know if you are, so if they feel the need to come aboard and search, they will. If not, they won't, but we're going to be honest with them. The captain definitely will be honest with them. Uh, if they ask if there's anyone aboard, we're going to say yes. Aye, aye, and I've never bothered with your honesty, but there are... Perhaps not the best racial tensions right now between my people and the elves. Well, we're aware of that. It's not uncommon. Um, we've seen it before, and matter of fact. Many a bar brawl between some of those wooded elves, like Arko here, his kin, and a dwarf. It happens, but the history is, well, it's a long history, longer than ours. And he, she looks over at the captain. 
We understand that. It's a shame, though. Uh, I don't think it is. It's a shame we didn't win. And he gets the mop back out and starts mopping about until the patrol boat's going to get closer. Very well, Master Dwarf. Uh, if you if you want to wait below deck, that's completely up to you. Um, as soon as you feel the boat moving, well, you know we've moved on. I'll wait till they get a bit closer. But when they're bored, oh. and she nods in agreement. Uh, she looks at Akko and signs something. Uh, Akko uh, immediately starts making preparations, and uh, he's he's uh, getting the sails uh, in place now that they're unfurled and down, making sure they're secure. Uh, the captain is uh, going into his cabin, um, doing whatever it is that he needs to do in there to get ready, uh, leaving the three of you uh, top deck here. As you watch the the sail, the spot in the distance, get larger and closer. Eliana just, just kind of waits on deck, um, maybe cleaning a few things here and there, tidying up a bit. Um, otherwise, she's remaining top deck. Lucian just continues to stare out toward the horizon, and he notices the slight um, bustle on on top deck, and begins to look around a little. Okay. So you you all uh, just go about your business, uh, preparing and getting ready. And as you do, uh, you can clearly see the uh, boat getting closer now. Uh, Juliana, uh, Lucien, uh, you see the, the sharp sails of a high elf vessel. Um, I'm not sure uh, that you've ever seen a high elf vessel before. Uh, you may have uh, in your travels. It's a very distinct image. And as it gets closer and closer, uh, the heraldry and the imagery, uh, the the glimmering of the wood, uh, it's polished and shiny. Um, the bright white of the sails, uh, it almost looks as though they've hardly been out in nature they've managed to keep it uh, so polished and clean um, that it's it's unbelievable that they've been uh, that they've been transporting or that they've been patrolling up and down the same river that you guys have been and as you get closer someone yells out hell prepare to be boarded please and the captain is standing there and he just waves his hand and nods and comes to uh, comes to the comes to the railing closest to where the high elf uh, boat is able to pull up to uh, before a plank is dropped down a large polished uh, light wood is dropped over the side and Akko rushes over and secures it to the railing. And across the railing, you see uh, this tall elf walk across and greets the captain. A tall elf walks across and he lets the captain know. Greetings, Captain. 
I am Erahil bin Venek. And who are you, sir? And the captain responds that he is uh, Captain Frisch, uh, the captain of this boat, and that his destination is Mordheim. And Erahil looks at him. Yes, well, most boats going this way are going to Mordheim. And Lucien, the others, you look and you see standing on the other boat, uh, just on the other boat, well-armored elves on each side of the planks. And then along the edge of the boat, the railing, you see elves with longbows and quivers just standing at the ready standing straight and just watching the captain as he speaks to Captain Frisch. And with a grace and a smoothness, Captain Birvanek walks over and looks down at you, Juliana. And you, milady. Who are you? Oh, uh, lovely to meet you. I am Yulian Vask. Miss Vask, it's a pleasure. He looks over at you, Lucien, and you, sir. Well, um, Lucien Pettibone. Mr. Pettibone. Can I ask you what your business is? Traveling to Mordheim. And he looks over at the captain and then looks back at you. Mordheim is a very dangerous place. Have you ever been there before? Indeed I have, sir. You have. Have you been there since it was destroyed? Perhaps not so recently. Yes, well, like I said, very dangerous place now. And he looks over at you, Juliana, and you accompany him. I am indeed, yes. And he looks around. I am assuming it's a standard cargo, Captain, is that correct? And Captain Frisch just nods. Aye, it is. Is there anyone else aboard? And the Captain just says, My mates! They're right over there, and he points to Saskia and Akko. And you can see the elf raise an eyebrow as he looks at Akko. And he nods over to Akko, who nods back at him. One of our wild brethren. You are lucky to have him on your boat. And Captain Frisch agrees. Yes, I'm very lucky. He has been quite the hand here. Extremely useful. Yes, well, I'm sure he has been. And as you're standing there and you see... Captain Birvanek, uh, just looking around, talking to the captain. Uh, you see another elf appear on the platform. And he has a different outfit on. He's got gems and jewels on, and he's wearing 
robes. He doesn't look like he's dressed for uh, security or combat or work of any kind. Um, he's a little more formal. And he comes walking across the plank over onto the boat. Uh, not saying anything. And he leans over and whispers something to Erahil Bivinik. Go ahead and make a perception test, uh, Lucian and Juliana, since you're the ones that are up there. You both, as he leans in and whispers to his captain, you both notice the captain's face become a little more serious and the smile leave as he slightly raises his eyebrows. And he glances over and looks at all three of you. And he walks over. Captain, you are sure it is standard cargo on this boat, correct? And the captain just nods, well, of course. Uh, I, I helped load it myself, all loaded in Altdorf. We were going to resupply. Over there at, uh, and he, you could tell he's getting somewhat flustered. Uh, he doesn't sure, he's not sure exactly what's going on, but he finishes. We we're, we we're going to supply at Midport Village. Um, but other than that, no. Food and gear, that's what we need. And cargo space to bring back what we need from Moldheim. And... The captain looks around, and he walks over to you, Yuliana. You said it was Miss Vask, correct? Uh, yes, it was. Have you heard of the boat, the mistress? Uh... Yes. Does that ring a bell to you? It does. Yes, really? it is. Uh, well, uh, unfortunately, um, as we were traveling, there was a, uh, a boat that seemed to have been on the ground. Um, we assume from pirates or um, a troll or something. Um, but yes, it was uh, on fire on the side of the river. And that's when Captain Frisch interrupts says oh yeah yes i i i guess i i could have mentioned that first thing i i was going to mention it um i just i just didn't see my opportunity just yet i'm glad you brought it up yes the the mistress three days back um she was set ablaze grounded we lost one of our men my second mate as they went to Went ashore to investigate what happened to the mistress. Um, apparently it was pirates, and you see the elf raise his eyebrows. Pirates, yes. Uh, there are pirates in these waters, especially as of late. That's why we are here. Yeah, I, I assumed that's why you were here. Um, but yes, the mistress... She, she she fell, it looks like, to pirates. And as we investigated, well, as I said, we lost one of our men. We were looking for survivors. He was looking for survivors. They, and he nods over to you guys. They were looking for survivors when they were set upon by a river troll. And the elf turns and looks at both of you. A river troll. Is that correct? 
That's correct. Well, I'm sorry to hear about your man, Captain. I know how hard it is to lose people that are close to you. And the elf in the robe leans in and whispers something to him again. And the elf turns around and looks at you, all of you. But despite losing your man, did you find anything else of import? And Yuliana shakes her head. Um, no, nothing else of uh, import. Um, though, um, we did notice uh, when we went onto the ship, um, and she looks to Lucian. I, I think you noticed as well. Maybe it was just me. But um, I don't know. There was, of course, many different. Um, Two separate, uh, I guess, uh, garments. Of course, it seems like the pilot set upon them, um, but it was just a uh, absolute massacre in there. There was so many bodies, and I don't know exactly well what could have come upon them to do something such as this. It was. Uh, that's very horrible in there. Yes, I could imagine that that was very horrible. <sighs> very well. If you say you didn't see anything, well, we'll be off. Make our way further down the river. You said three days, is correct? Yes, so, um... Uh, the, the ship, um, kind of when we were there, uh, it was on fire, but, um, did it get more consumed in flames as we were with the river troll? It was actually less consumed in flames. It was more of a smoldering fire, um, that looked like it was going out. There were, there were flames, but they were, they were kind of on their, on their way out. Yuyana nods. Yes, um, the, uh, the three days back, but, um, there is something, um, within the caves, um, where the river troll was. I don't know if it was the, the troll itself, um, I think it was something, uh, uh smaller, maybe around uh, our size. I don't know if someone was hiding in the caves deep within, but we searched and unfortunately we couldn't find them, but they seem to want to avoid us. Hmm, perhaps bandits. Maybe. Just uh, be careful if you go and investigate. And he smiles uh, the, the corner of his mouth uh, just the slightest smile and raises his eyebrow oh well of course miss vask we will be careful especially at your assistance insistence i'm glad you told us to be careful that's wonderful and he turns around and he looks at the soldiers he makes a motion and they immediately step to the side in formation and the the elves lining the railing of the boat uh, all step backwards and put their bows back around their backs instead of holding them and he stops and then turns around slightly Captain, are you sure there's nothing else you want to tell us? And Captain Fresh looks at him, 
Uh, I, I I lost a man three days back. Investigating the mistress. Oh, we've been traveling since. We're headed to Midport Village. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't know what else there is I could tell you. Um, it's just us. We've we've got a dwarf on board. I don't I don't know if that interests you at all, but I I don't know what it is exactly that uh, you're you're getting at here, Captain. And the elf looks around. He smiles at you, Lucien and Juliana. He nods to the captain. And he walks back across. And as he walks back across the planks, the one in the robes looks at you, Juliana. And he stares at you. And he doesn't smile. He doesn't have any kind of facial at all. And he stares at you long enough to where it becomes uncomfortable and obvious to those around you that he's just staring at you. And then he turns around and with almost a crackle of energy in the air, a spark of electricity as he walks back across the plank back onto their boat. The plank is withdrawn. Their anchor is raised and you see their boat start moving back down the river in the opposite direction, going where you had just come from. Juliana looks fairly uh, uncomfortable at this point, um, having someone stare so intently at her. And uh, after a while, after the staring, she kind of broke um, eye contact and was more looking down in a way, and she kind of maintains that uh, downward gaze as they uh, leave and depart from their own ship. You guys watch them as their sails get smaller and smaller, the bright, brilliant white of them moving off in the distance. Once it's far enough away, the captain turns to Saskia and says, raise the sails. And then he signs over to Akko, makes some motions at him. And Akko immediately moves to the back and starts cranking the, the anchor back up into the boat. And as Saskia is working at raising the sails and Akko is cranking on the anchor, the captain walks over to you. Oh, what was that about? I, I don't know. And he looks over at you, Lucian. Do you know what that was about? Seemed like they were a good... Good, uh... Um, uh they, they had some vested interest in the mistress. I'm not entirely sure what it is they're looking for. And... Go ahead and make a... What is it if you're lying? There's not a lie test. Uh, I would say... I mean, you, bribery, there's no money involved. So, I mean, it would be... I would say it would either be... Um, cool? Just a... I would say cool or charm, probably, mm -hmm. because ch gonna... char charm is still something where you're attempting to yeah, lie to I'm somebody. Gonna, I'm going to go with charm more than cool. Cool is your ability to resist and stay mm -hmm. cool in a situation. Um, well, I, I guess that could work in a pinch, but I'm going to say charm. Both of you go ahead and make charm tests. 
I'm gonna go ahead and spin that fade. Ooh! Okay. Yes. So, as you both tell him that you have no idea what he might be to, um, why he's asking about anything else on the boat uh, other than standard cargo and gear, uh, I'm assuming your thoughts immediately race to the stone that you have hidden away in the armoire. Oh, yeah. Uh, but despite your thoughts going there, your words uh, come out letting the captain know that uh, you're not sure what is going on. You're not sure why uh, you were given the hard look, Yuliana, or why the captain uh, of the elf vessel continued to press and ask. And... Captain Frisch looks at you both, giving your explanations, and just finally says, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, I don't... I don't understand either. I'm not sure what they were getting on about. Maybe they're just being extra cautious. Maybe the, the loss of the mistress has them a little jumpy, so... Uh, I don't know. In any case... It's none of our business now. It matters none. We still have a couple days journey ahead of us. We have some work to do. Well, hopefully it will be more calm than that was. Yes, well. I don't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a high elf patrol boat. They are very, very serious about protecting the waterway from pirates or anyone else they deem a threat. They're not murderers, not by any means, but they also will not suffer anyone lying to them or misleading them if it leads them to missing their quarry. Well, at least they're gone now, and whatever they seemed very intrigued with the mistress, so maybe whatever they find there, I hope it does satisfy them. Yes, well, <sighs> let them be satisfied once they find the mistress. <sighs> and if they find Alwyn... May they give him, may they give him the proper burial he deserves. And he puts his head down and lowers his eyes. And you can tell the pain is still fresh as he mentions Alwyn's name. And he walks over to the railing and looks over the edge. Then he raises his head back up. All right, you scabs. Back to work. We still have a journey ahead of us. Yuliana goes back to tidying. Lucian makes his way back up to the bow and... Just continues to do as he had been before, just scanning and surveying the horizon. And the captain walks up there and stands next to you. And he pulls the spyglass off of his belt and he hands it over to you. I don't want to be surprised by any more patrol boats or... Any boats, for that matter. Use this. Let me know the first sight of anything that looks out of the ordinary. Or anything that just isn't water. You understand? Lucian turns and looks at the captain. Just gives a slight nod. Understood, captain. And 
and he turns and walks away back down. He talks to Saskia. He signs to Akko. He walks up to you, Yuliana and Dorak, as you go about your business. We've got several days left here. Hopefully two, probably three. Just depends on how the winds favor us. We should be doing good though. But in that time, And then he stops and he thinks about it. Oh, bloody. I don't. We're going to be stopping at that village. And when we do, like I told you before, we're there one night and one night only. You need to be back on the boat the very next morning so we can be off. Does everyone understand that? Yes, Captain. Hi, hi. Lucian nods. And as Lucian looks through the spyglass, he he sees that he can see a pretty decent distance. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, you know he's he's lost on the horizon there. I can't see past that, uh, but everything else uh, is is pretty clear. Uh, so there's some decent distance on that spyglass. He looks over to the shoreline and can see easily within to the wooded area um, onto the shores. Um, so it's a it's a well crafted uh, spyglass that extends out um, about two two and a half feet. Um, quality made, uh, bound in leather, uh, brass uh, edging and trimming around it. Um, so it's it's a uh, it's weighted well, balanced, and uh, feels good in your hands. <clears throat> Lucian looks around at the bow. And then turns and looks back to toward the stern, um, and decides that the higher vantage point um, will probably be the best area. So he begins to make his way to the poop deck. The poop deck, and you make your way there. And you scan the horizon and you look around and it just seems like a progression of the same thing. Water, forest, rocky outcrops, birds. One time you passed a small little fishing boat closer to the shoreline, but it was no bother. And the days passed, one day, two days. As they pass, you get closer and closer to your destination. And Frisch looks at you and says, you should be able to see it right over there now. And he's pointing towards the area where Midport Village should be. And you look out across the water Lucian and the rest of you uh, can see in a distance as it starts getting closer. You can see the little jutty of a, a small harbor. You can see other boats lined up over there. And as you get closer, the, the buildings start to stand out. People in the distance walking back and forth. And the place seems alive as boats and captains and crews and everyone else goes about their business. As Captain Frisch gracefully and easily pulls the pulls his riverboat up, gets it as close to one of the one of the jetties that are sticking far out into the river, into the deep water. 
Nako throws ropes. Saskia throws ropes. The captain throws ropes. Durak is throwing ropes over the side. Big, hefty ropes. And crew on the dock start grabbing them and slowly easing your boat in closer and closer until it makes contact with the pier. It makes contact with the pier. Saskia starts unfurling the the uh, sails again, rolling them up, securing them. All the work that needs to be done after a boat uh, gets docked with a pier. As the boat gets docked with the pier, after several hours, you all make your way uh, onto the Midport Village uh, area and move in there. Look around. It's a dreary place, run down somewhat, but busy. It's busy as people bustle about, as it's one of the deep water harbors along the river. And with the increased traffic going to Mordheim, as the interest in the spoils and riches that are there increases, this place becomes even more and more popular. And you see the hard stares from people, people who live and work along this hard river. They look at you as you come ashore and into their village. Hard stares from people who, who know that you're probably only going to be there just like all the others. And then you'll be off. And as you walk in and see these people, the scene goes black. And that's it for tonight.